You're listening to WCAT Radio, your home for authentic Catholic programming. Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Cynthia Tulin Wilson on my show, Author to Author. Tonight, I'm here with Ben Bongers, who you may recall, I have already interviewed him twice, and with his illustrator, Courtney Boatwright. And this is a very interesting book uh, for children that um, I think you will enjoy. Courtney, could you hold up the, the uh, yes, yeah, see? So it's really just even looking at it, it's attractive and it's called The Farmer, The Miner and The Artisan. And I just love that camel. <laughs> so, um, so how are both of you today? I can't complain. How are you doing, Courtney? Yeah, I'm doing great. I'm great. excited to be here. Okay. 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 Uh, ben, would you like to start us with a prayer and then we'll Absolutely. talk about the book? No problem. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, you told us of your kingdom through storytelling. And you told stories that would allow the entire world to listen. Please fill us with the fire to tell your story through our words and pictures. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, Ben, uh, what led you to write this book? Well, uh, honestly, it was kind of a crazy thing. After I uh, got the other book put together, uh, the publisher, uh, Sebastian, said, Mm -hmm. How about we do a children's book? I'm like, okay, I'm game. What do you have an I you know, do you have an idea? What what do you want to do? And he was he was uh very specific. He sent me a text saying, Here's what I want. I want three people, a farmer, a miner, and a craftsman from three different regions, all gathered together to gather stuff that ultimately becomes three gifts for the Magi to deliver. So three stories in one that all come together at the end at the manger scene. Go. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) That's really exciting. (laughs) That's what I was given. So I was like, uh, okay, let's, let's start there. So um, basically I knew from the very beginning, I wanted it to be full of diversity. I wanted every walk of life possible. I wanted every skin tone possible from the Middle East to the Far East to mm-hmm. Africa. Mm-hmm. I wanted every, I, I wanted, I wanted a book so that when people looked at it, they could see themselves somewhere in that book. Yeah. No matter where they were from. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought it was also very important to have um, every single person in the book have a challenge of some kind. One of the kings is far too tall. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One person has only one eye. One oh. of the other, one of the other um, kings has only one arm. Mm-hmm. One mm-hmm. person is too short for their size, shall we say. Uh, but every single person has something that is a challenge to them. They are, we are not dealing with the perfect Adonis. Every single person has something different. Mm-hmm. That was, that was a very, very important thing for me. Um, the other one was, uh, I, I, I'm a firm believer that each one of us is a puzzle piece. And we just need to figure out what puzzle we fit into mm-hmm. by having that, that, that challenge or that empty space. Another piece is going to fit into that puzzle piece. Mm-hmm. So it was very important for my aspect. And I gave Courtney copious notes as to ideas, what colors everybody should be, what colors each person should wear. Mm-hmm. Uh, all of those things, you know, physical size, physical stature, all of those things. And she came through with amazing flying colors throughout. It mm-hmm. really, it really, really made the book. 
It really did. So that was the background. Mm -hmm. Well, just looking at the cover, it's so attractive, um, you know, that I can see where people would be drawn to it. So, yeah, so I can see where the two of you work together very well. Yeah, Yeah, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. How about you, Courtney? What, What was the biggest challenge for you? You know, it's drawing people. Um, but, uh, no, it was fun. It was very, very helpful that you gave such a description of every character down to the color ways that you need everything to be, um, had, had I been just a lot of research at the the very beginning to make sure I'm getting the proper skin tones for an Ethiopian mm-hmm. and, uh, just uh, like, mm-hmm. um, it was just a lot of like careful attention to detail for everything and also a very fast timeline. Um, but so I think just getting myself organized in the beginning really quickly was a little bit of a challenge and then trying my best to illustrate people when I'm used to illustrating creatures, um, was a challenge and still a challenge and one that I will continuously try to improve on. Um, (laughs) Well, we are creatures too, though. (laughs) Yes. Um, mine are a little different. (laughs) Uh, that's that is interesting. So you know, I like the idea of the diversity because um, you know I see people all the time. You know, every every one of us looks different. Everyone has different goals, different problems, different ages, whatever. And um, but we all have one thing in common: we're human. Exactly. And for some reason, for some reason. People just don't want to bite it. They just don't want to hear that. Yeah, they forget. That's yeah. right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I think many actually disbelieve it. But um, of course, I grew up at the time that the uh, civil rights movement movement was just starting, mm-hmm. and you really had to watch that on television every night to realize on the news to realize how uh, how bad it was. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 But. Um, I love the the diversity because I mean this is this is a story for everybody when you think of the three kings and you think of the manger scene. I mean, what more universal story is there? So Right. Yeah. Well and the other the other big factor is the three characters actually go to the manger scene before the Magi do. Oh. They're actually the first they they leave the magi a part of the story is they are traders so they bring their wares to petra to the great market of petra and you know sell most of their wares there Mm -hmm. but they're not staying in a hotel or in a motel Mm -hmm. or in you know yeah they're staying out on the road leading Mm -hmm. out of petra up on the hills Mm -hmm. they hear a commotion and they go and see what's going on and mm-hmm. they find out that the three kings have been robbed on their way. Oh, right. Well, they have myrrh, they have frankincense, they have the ability to nurse the kings or the magi or the power wise men, whatever you want to call them, nurse them back to health. Mm-hmm. They're on their way to find this, this new king that keeps seeing the star. That's how the book opens is with the star. And they, they're very scared because it's like, okay, you guys are nursed back to health. The great, uh, the great market of Petra is now closed. We're going home. And the three kings are like, uh, we're kind of afraid to travel on these yeah. roads anymore. Yeah. Can you, can you go with us at least to see the king in Jerusalem? Because we have to find out who this new king is. Is and you can sell some more of your wares there, you know. And yeah. you can sell oh, more wares in Jerusalem, exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, we're down to our last thing, but sure, we'll we'll tag along <laughs> with you guys. Mm-hmm. Once they get to Jerusalem, the Magi go to see Herod. So the three, we followed the three. They're like, well, the star went that way. Let's go that way toward home, and they end up spending the night in Bethlehem mm-hmm. in a stable well, cave. And they stumble mm-hmm. upon the stable cave, and they're like, whoa, 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 the the star seemed to stop right here. What's in there? Let's go take a look. 
and I won't give everything away, but right. the, the one big thing, and Courtney does a great job with this, the one gift or what they have left, they are all craftsmen. A farmer ha- has, has farmed the frankincense and the myrrh. Uh, the, the miner has gold trinkets that he's put together. And the, the uh, craftsman or the artisan has made different things. And the, the miner's wife made blankets. So they have all of these things. Mm-hmm. But the one thing that they really gave weren't these gifts. The one thing that they really gave was the last things they had mm-hmm. to this family who had nothing right. in this cave with a brand new baby. They mm-hmm. hadn't eaten in a while. They had no money. They obviously didn't have a place to stay. They were basically immigrants in mm-hmm. a cave. Mm-hmm. And the gift they gave was their time, their care, their concern, and really the last things they had. Mm-hmm. So that's that's more or less the moral of the story in a nutshell. We think we have certain gifts to give, but what we really are giving are the gifts we don't even realize we have or that we possess. Those mm-hmm. are the real gifts that we give. Hmm. Well, that's pretty creative. <laughs> well, I love I'll be honest with you, Courtney is the one that brought it to life. When you see the yeah, pictures. Yeah, the story is really good. Well, yeah. when you see the pictures, though, the pictures really show the essence of the story really coming to life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can understand that because, um, you know, we don't just hear or read. You know, we need to see something. That's and, right. Uh, that's, you know, so that's great. But um, especially for children, yeah. I think one of the best parts about the completed package is, is something that Ben and I had talked about when he first came to me with this is. Uh, the importance of making sure that the colors were consistent all the way through mm-hmm. so that children mm-hmm. reading the book are able to follow the character in green the whole way. And sure. There's so many characters in this story. Mm-hmm. And I I don't read a whole lot of children's books, but I do have little nephews. And mm-hmm. there's often one or two characters that you're really following the whole story. So having a cast mm-hmm. of, I mean, we've got six people, nine people, really. Um, yeah. That's a large cast for a for a child, yeah. Right out the gate. Yeah. So um, the colors were kind of the fun part of making that consistent and then marrying mm-hmm. the backgrounds to them. So mm-hmm. I think visually it's going to be great for people to see. Um, mm-hmm. Well, in fact, I just got, I had uh, every book I write, I send out as a beta test to mm-hmm. people that are parents or elementary school teachers or mm-hmm. hopefully a combination thereof. Mm-hmm. grandparents to show their kids, that type of thing. I just got an email uh, yesterday from one of the beta testers. Uh, her name is Leah. And she said, hey, thank you so much for making me a part of this process. Mm-hmm. I don't know you and you don't know me. But the one thing that I found really amazing about the book is its openness and its diversity. Mm-hmm. You see, I have two children. One is autistic and the other one is dyslexic. Oh, dear. Thank you so much for giving (laughs) very short and easy names to all of the characters. My kid could actually read it on their own. It's the first time they've read a book with names by themselves. And my autistic child was especially drawn to the characters and their colors. They actually put their finger on the characters of the same color every time I turn the page. The first time was the blue one. The second time was the green one. The third Mm -hmm. time was the red one. Thank you so much for making each puzzle piece, my children, fit together. Mm -hmm. I love that. I do too. But, you know, again, with the diversity, think about that. You went out trying to do something that would show people diversity. And here you have two children with serious diseases that are different and they both respond to it. So, I mean, it's like you've even gotten to the diversity of, of childhood problems there. It's, it's really amazing. We've actually done our job. We've That's actually always done nice. Our job. That's what we set out to do. 
we yep. make it inclusive and it's working. Yeah. That's great. That's great. So, yeah, we had spoken in one of our other interviews, we had spoken about the whole creative process that you go through. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember sitting there and saying, well, he, <laughs> good Lord, why didn't I ever think of any of this? <laughs> 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 well, just one thing I would have been. <laughs> and see, a perfect <laughs> example, I know Courtney's dad and Courtney's dad several years back went to Petra where where the great oh. bazaar is mm -hmm. takes place. I also read um Charles Longenecker's book uh that he wrote on Mystery of the Magi. They mm -hmm. think that the Magi actually did travel through Petra and possibly one or two of them were from there. Oh. So again doing the research on an ongoing basis, going down mm -hmm. the rabbit holes and doing the research. Mm-hmm just you just kind of hoard all of this research and eventually it comes out and in writing a children's book in particular you have very few words mm -hmm. and very colorful pictures mm -hmm. to explain an entire story so for me and for courtney both our job is to take these these huge very all-encompassing subjects yeah and bring them down to morsel size that a mm -hmm. child can actually digest and understand. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the challenge. Oh, well, you've certainly done that. Well, we try. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's really, you know, that's really a good thing. You know, I've often wondered um, about the, the number of children who can grasp all of the children's books, you know, it's like some of them are just, um, I mean, they're cutesy, but um, I've never really uh, been confident that they were um, intellectually available or the child would be intellectually ready uh, to digest some of the things. But um, yeah. but the way you're describing this, you know, I, even I never would have thought of colors consistency of color helping a child look at the same that's incredible that's that's really great well you have to think like you can <laughs> yeah <laughs> really childish before so yeah well, and same when you're uh, like starting my process of hand sketching and doing it all you really have to read each line and be like all right what are what are the key things that the kid is going to follow yeah. uh, or or what's the right. action on the page mm -hmm. that they're they're seeing. But I think at the mm -hmm. end of the day with the colors, I have over 50 repeated colors. Each character mm -hmm. has between four to or two to four colors. Their animals have assigned colors. So you can always tell who's matched with what. So it was like a whole catalog of a sheet that I had to reference the entire time for the couplings. Yeah. So that's, you know, when you think of that, being able to do that and yet it didn't, um, negatively impact your creative drawing it's like no, that's, fun. yeah that's that's great that was the final phase of it i'm definitely a person who stages everything then i hand mm -hmm. draw everything and then i take it and digitize it and then i color it mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. i'm not a painter i can't i can never decide on a color i have to be able to shift <laughs> okay well uh, i mean it really is amazing because you there are three very different and distinct donkeys in this in this book. <laughs> okay. And I can tell you which who which donkey belongs to who because just based on the blanket the color and the shape and the and the face is different oh my. from each other. They're they're as mm -hmm. different as the humans are. Wow. So I mean it really is the the, the design eye is really amazing throughout. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the two of you ought to literally, I'm not kidding here. Um, I think the two of you ought to come up with some kind of creative, you know, some way of teaching this kind of creativity to people. Um, I mean, I'm obviously, um, yeah, it's a, I'm, because, good. I'm good. Yeah, really, because it's, you know, this is the second time. I mean, you were talking about how you. In one interview, you were talking about how you went through the book and how you wanted certain things to be in certain places, and you thought about probably 50 things. And 
I was sitting there saying, man, I'm never going to write again. That's <laughs> 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 not, not that good. But um, really, this is something that if you, you could really help, um, help struggling artists, both, um, you know, with figures and with, uh, with writing. I don't, I've never heard anything like the things I've heard from you. I went through an MFA in writing, which was a good MFA in writing at Albertus Magnus and um, never heard any of these things. Well, you really, I, you really should do something. Well, like, the, the, I mean, the, our backgrounds, both of us are artistic backgrounds. I was in yeah. opera mm -hmm. years as a storyteller. Yes. Courtney's okay. been in the arts for years and years. Mm -hmm. so that's our background. We, as my wife loves to say, box? What box? I don't think that's the box. I don't know where the box is. <laughs> no box. <laughs> no box. Yep, no box. But no, but just to be able to help people with, I mean, giving them some some examples like what you were just talking about here would be, you know, would really be helpful to people's um I don't know if I actually want to call it art when they're starting out, but it would certainly be good for their um, technical knowledge, you know, yeah. to see how the creativity is used. Yeah, like a good creative case study. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm good. If, if anybody that sees this ever wants mm -hmm. to reach out to me or mm -hmm. to Courtney, I'll, yeah. we make, we'll make sure that we, we correspond. That's great. I'd have mm -hmm. no problem with that. Courtney? Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm game. Yeah. Yeah. Always up for new things. There you <laughs> yeah. go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, that really is, uh, it's, I like the story. I like the diversity aspect so much. Um, because again, we come in all shapes, sizes, colors, cultures, you know, educations, and yet so many think that we're not all human. I mean, no one would ever say that, but. but oh, they say that. They know they do. Yeah. yeah well, you know. that's, that's one of the other main key points that Courtney and I kind of discussed at, from the very beginning. We wanted to take this nativity narrative that mm -hmm. everybody knows. Mm -hmm. Everyone is put on a pedestal way above what they are and who they are. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to take them off of that pedestal and, and, let every child see themselves color losing an eye losing an arm seeing yourself in the manger story mm -hmm. right. be a part of that story mm -hmm. not just this high and holy narrative that we've always turned it into that makes mm -hmm. it unattainable mm -hmm. it's well, a story go ahead well, and that's what I was talking to some of my coworkers when I had first started drawing this and kind of letting them know the idea, you know, you're excited. And mm -hmm. the very first question I got from one of my besties at work was what color, uh, what color is baby Jesus? Now, she is African American. And um, it was very important uh, for her to hear th that I'm saying every color except for white. You're really not going to see any white people in this book. And she's like, ah, that's very refreshing. Like it was a, it was a very good kind of eye opening. Like that's important to be able to see yourself mm -hmm. in that. So, you know, um, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen uh, even statues. Uh, you know, you, you see those little manger statues around Christmas. I don't think I've ever seen one where Mary, Joseph mm -hmm. and Jesus weren't all white. Right. Um, right. So I mean, they wouldn't have been. yeah, yeah. As Jews, <laughs> as Jews, they would at least probably have had more olive skin. Exactly. You know? But um, exactly. yeah, I have seen where one of the wise men was uh, once. I think I saw one was Asian, one was white, and one was black. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, um, yeah. yeah. So, um, but I think that's such an important point. You know, something that's that's to me that's exciting. Well, and even getting down to the, the notes that I gave Courtney, mm -hmm. Caspar is an older, we're talking 80-year-old, uh, Indian Asian. Mm -hmm. So he's, mm -hmm. he's obviously of that, of that stature, of that age. He would be the lightest complexion of the three. Sure. Melchior is a Persian man, probably from Iran. Uh, he's very introverted, 
but very smart and excessively tall. Right. We want to accentuate that, again, he feels like an outsider simply because of his his height. Mm -hmm. Balthazar is a very young, almost boyish man from Babylon, from Iraq. Darkest, yeah. Mm -hmm. And has only one arm. He has the darkest of complexions because he's from the southern region. Mm-hmm. So we took we took the idea of where they were from, what their skin color and skin tone would be from those areas, and what their ethnic background was. Mm-hmm. We wanted to make sure to highlight those things simply mm-hmm. because, I don't know about you, I'm tired of seeing the blue-eyed, yellow-haired Jesus laying in a manger. It, it, that's yeah. not the way it was. That, mm-hmm. that's and it's certainly it. not what ours is. So No. Oh, God, mm-hmm. no. Love it? No. Mm-hmm. Oh, I want to nope. see this book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so, it will be out very, very soon. I mean, it's it's in production right now. It should be on great. the shelf in two weeks. We should be able to order it from uh, Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and everybody in about three, four okay. days. Okay. I'll do that. So, well, it's... Uh, You've you've hit another home run there, Ben. <laughs> well, I, I, listen, I wasn't alone. Courtney is the one that did yeah, the art yeah. for this. She, she did the hard part. I just wrote the story. Oh, I don't know. Writing writing can be difficult. Yeah, yeah, it can be. I think anything in the creative process, no matter how much you love it, can be difficult. So that's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. The whole idea is have fun. Just play with it until it works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Something to think about. It's been a while since I've written anything. Well, it's time to pick up the pen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I should. <laughs> it's a, listen, I, I wrote my first book when I was dealing with failing parents. So it's yeah. a great way to step out of, of your caretaker position or out of your mundane style of life or... <laughs> Your, your workaday life, whatever your background is, whatever you're doing, mm-hmm. yeah. take the time, give yourself a mental break, and go write something, anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I might do that. I've, I've been a memoirist. That's what I had gone to uh, Albertus for because I wanted to uh, write my life story in the hope that um, someone else would be spared the fate that I had. <laughs> <laughs> um but um you know i i've not written much other than theology mm. other than the memoir well so, it's time yeah. to step up and open yeah, the brain never too late never too late never I can too late. see it all now i'll be winning a prize at 89 I won't be able to get up the stairs on the stage. I say go for it you said it here so make it happen I say go for it Okay. All righty. Well, <clears throat> thank you for another good interview and uh, for both of you sharing the information. I mean, just even seeing the cover is impressive. You know, the, the artwork, it's like, you know, it's it's beautiful just to look at that one picture. So I, I can imagine that the book must be uh, beautiful, you know, as well as... Um, all inclusive, which is so important. So, yeah. So, um, Ben, would you like to close us with a prayer? Absolutely. Okay. In the, name of the, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, fill us with the ability to put into words and pictures your will. Help us build your kingdom one word and one pixel at a time. For this we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay, well, thank you very much for the interview, and uh, hopefully you'll do some more, and I'll see you both again. You will. Thank, thank you, you very much, okay. Cynthia. You Have take good care. Night. I Bye. will. Take care, thank Courtney. you. Yep. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello, God's beloved. I'm Annabelle Mosley, author, professor of theology, and host of Then Sings My Soul and Destination Sainthood on WCAT Radio. I invite you to listen in and find inspiration along this sacred journey we're traveling together to make our lives a masterpiece and, with God's grace, become saints. 
Join me, Annabelle Mosley, for Then Sings My Soul and Destination Sainthood on WCAT Radio. God bless you. Remember, you're never alone. God is always with you. Thank you for listening to a production of WCAT Radio. Please join us in our mission of evangelization. And don't forget, love lifts up where knowledge takes flight.